guys, this next comic coming to the stage is the whole reason most of you are here. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't leave after a second. Keep it going for Josh Kramer. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, let's give it up one more time for the man of the day, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Woo! Bringing us all together on this day. Very, very exciting. Uh, this is my fourth time doing comedy ever, so I'm still pretty new at this. Uh, but it's my first time doing comedy ever with this handy dandy Fitbit on my wrist. So we're going to play a little uh, guessing game. It's uh, Price is Right rules. It's just going to be uh, closest without going over wins. Uh, anyone want to guess my current? Heart rate. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> anyone? anyone what? 35 on deck. <laughs> what? 98. That's like, uh, like standing in a crowd. 150. 150. 150? Like, that's pretty active. 176. 176. Whoa. Also dead. Like, gotta get back dead. <laughs> okay, ready? And. Bum, 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 bum. The correct answer is uh, 162. Oh. <laughs> you guys are watching an active cardio workout. <laughs> I'm, I'm working out in front of all of you right now. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty addicted to technology in general. Like I, uh, I can't get enough. I, I get a, Fitbit's the latest example, but Facebook it tells me where where my friends are in the world, who of my friends knows other of my friends. Uh, what my ex is up to, who my ex is currently dating, why did my ex end it all, where is my ex right now, is my ex in a public place. But the Fitbit, the Fitbit's great. Uh, so like I, I, I found that I'm relying on it just like I'm relying on all of technology. So I've, I've uh, outsourced all of my emotions to my Fitbit. So I, I recently lost, uh, my great uncle Gerald passed away, and someone asked me how I'm holding up, and so, Um, oh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty good. I'm calm. I'm calm about my... He's in a better place now. It's, oh, yeah, he's, he's doing well. Or I killed my great uncle Gerald for the, for the insurance money. I didn't, I, great uncle Gerald doesn't exist. It's not real. I use the Fitbit to track my exercise. Anyone here do yoga? Yeah. Yoga? Yes? Yes? Yoga? I've been doing yoga for like a year and a half now, and I hate it a little bit. I can't stand it. Uh, you can throw away all the spiritual crap. It's, a, it's okay. Just tell me how stretch. That's all I ask. I'm always impressed with yoga teachers who uh, can, with a very clear as a bell voice, call out the instructions for what they want me to be doing while they're doing what they want me to be doing. Like, they'll say something like, uh, okay, we're going to do twisting chair pose. Put your right elbow on your left knee. But if I were doing it the way they were doing it, it would sound like this. Okay, we're going to put our, <laughs> our right elbow on our left knee. <laughs> what about spin class? Anyone here do spin class? No? Yes? One person right here? No. Not a very fit crowd. That's okay. <laughs> uh, fit class, uh, spin class is great. It's good for you. Uh, it makes me worry about the uh, state of public education in this country because I don't know that we're turning on students that can uh, confidently count backwards from 10. <laughs> like, they'll call out, uh, okay, we're going to do this for 10 more seconds. 10. <laughs> 9. <laughs> 8. And then they'll get really, really confident at the end because the first three numbers, three, two, one. Like, okay, we know you know those three numbers. But like, are they, are they grasping for the numbers? I can't quite tell. I just gotta know. Do you know the numbers one through ten or not? Uh, I got really disappointed when I first went to spin class because I thought it was a class to get in touch with your inner child, see how busy we can get. But uh, that's the thing about naming things. It's tough to name things and, and hit the nail right on the head. It's hard to name something really, really accurately like the first time. Uh, it makes me think about the product, the Pooper Scooper, a lot. Because everyone's heard about the Pooper Scooper. It creates a mess. No, no one, even if half of you who own dogs here, you don't own the Pooper Scooper because it creates a huge mess. But you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's a pretty well-named product. It could have been named slightly better, though. Think about it. The Pooper, that's the dog. <laughs> and the Scooper, that's me. I'm the, I'm the Scooper. It could have just as easily been named the Poop Scoop. It already rhymes, and it's grammatically correct. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's grammatically correct, and it rhymes. I have basically the exact same problem with the squatty potty. It, I'm doing both the squatting and the potty. 
It could have just as easily been named the Shitter Sitter. Why not? <laughs> that would have been better. Uh, but the worst named product by far is the uh, the Windbreaker. It's just a casual jacket, but uh, but it it sounds like a plus five defense weapon from, uh, from Dungeons and Dragons. Like, uh, like see if you can tell the difference. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be right there. I'm just gonna grab my Windbreaker. Or or I'm gonna be right there. I'm gonna grab. Windbreaker. <laughs> oh, did you pluck Windbreaker from the Enchanted Cave of Wonders? <laughs> Nay. Did, did our wise, benevolent king bequeath Windbreaker to you to, uh, to defend the realm? Nay, t'was the discount rack. At, at J.C. Kameen. I hear you can also pick one up at Walmart. <laughs> I feel similarly to a product called the Surge Protector. Yes, I will protect my house with a Surge Protector! Just to make sure the, the, the switch is flipped. Just make sure the light is on. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yes, we're protecting from surges. Um, sometimes naming things can like hide the true nature of a thing. Like uh, the, the word collector, it implies someone has culture, passion for a certain subject. Someone collects all the memorabilia from the Coca-Cola company. That's pretty cool, right? But what it really is is greed. Collecting things is just greed. You're just showing someone something that you're not gonna do anything with, you're just gonna look at it. It's no different than Scrooge McDuck with his uh, vault full of gold coins. Uh, oh, look at my collection of rare coins. Yes, I do have a collection of currency. It's called the bank account, and I'm not that good at collecting things. I'm not that good. Okay, I've got, I've got one last thing. It's a, it's a story that I've been told, I have to tell you all, is a true story. This really, really did happen to me. Uh, it was about 10, 11 years ago. Uh, all you have to know is that I, I had to go every day, it seemed, uh, it felt like every day I had to go to the study abroad office to get ready to study abroad. Uh, and every day it's the same story. Basically, you put your name in with the uh, front desk person and you wait for your name to be filled. This is usually not a problem, you just do, do your homework, read a magazine or something. Uh, but one day I went in there and there was almost no one in the waiting room, this was pretty strange, except for one Asian girl. Now, how did I know she was Asian? She looked Asian. She just, she just looked Asian. I mean, people look the way they look. It's, it, it's, it's not racist to know where people are from based on how they look. It would have been racist to assume something about her if based on how she looked. Like if I assumed that she was going to do a study abroad program to study math, that would have been pretty racist. It was probably math. But uh, people look the way they look. Take me, for example. I look like 1930s Nazi propaganda. <laughs> 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 There's a political cartoon, I'm sure you've seen it in the history books, it's a, it's a guy who kind of looks like me, he's a heavy set, he's holding a bag of money, and he's leaning on top of the entire world, I'll just do it for you. <laughs> it stings a little bit, but that Nazi propaganda cartoonist, they really nailed me, okay, okay. People look the way they look. So, I'm in the, in the study abroad office, and I put my name in, and I sit down, and I wait for my name to be called, and the person behind the front desk calls out, Young Jew? And I go, <laughs> yes. And uh, the Asian girl stands up and uh, walks right up. And that happened to me ten years ago. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>